Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography and Vision and Light. Today I'm joined by two of my people who I'm super, super inspired by for the work that they're doing. Um, and it's David Kingham and Cody Schultz. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Good, good to see you, Alistair. We'll have to work with the, the, the satellite delay that's going on from Scotland to <laughs> the Western United States. Um, no matter how good the tech gets, we, we still end up with awkward pauses. So how are you guys doing? I mean, obviously with two of you on, you're going to have to take it in turns. David, you and I haven't spoken for a while. How are you doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Um, super busy as usual. And um, yeah, still traveling mostly full time. And um, yeah, doing good. Good. And Cody, this is actually the first time we've spoken uh, face to face, so it's uh, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you as well. It's uh, going. <laughs> oh, tell me that in half an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of the things I've been kind of focusing on with the vision and light portion of of the of the YouTube channel here is. Um, most of the people who've been on recently have been producing books. You know, we've had Eric Bennett, we've had TJ Thorne, um, Bill Neal was on, and uh, just the last episode was Crystal Schneider. So people creating kind of bodies of work rather than just online content or Instagram posts and that type of thing. And obviously David is someone I've known for, how long is it now? I mean, it must be, I don't know, at least a decade. When did you guys take over yeah, NPM? Um, I don't know. That was like t 2018, I think. Okay, right. So t 2018, for those of you who don't know, David Kingham is the mastermind behind the Nature Photographers Network. Um, we were all on there, I guess, in the 2000s in its original format. Um, and it kind of just sort of disappeared and dwindled for a while, but it was certainly the place where I met up with people like Guy Tal and Mark Adamus and Bill Neal and Adam Gibbs and Sean Bagshaw and a whole bunch of other photographers who were kind of, uh, some of us were just starting out, I guess, in the 2000s. And David uh, took over NPN and you bought it out and you revamped the website and created uh, a very modern um, community of nature photographers. Um, what's the, what drove you to do that? And how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what drove me to it is it was kind of the same story as you. I met so many of my friends on there, um, because back then that was one of the few options. Um, and you know, we, got together in person and went out, you know, shooting together and, um, you know, did art exhibitions and things like that. And so it was just this amazing place where you could actually, you know, meet other photographers. And, you know, then it started dying out because of social media and they didn't keep up with the technology. Um, so I, I didn't want to see that community die. Um, I, you know, I thought that was a really tragic thing to see that go away because it just wasn't the same on social media at all. Um, so yeah, I just decided, what the hell, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so I, I reached out to the owner and, you know, he was um, willing to let it go to the right person. So yeah, I took it over and um, completely revamped it from the ground up. And it's, you know, it was a slow start um, trying to get people interested in it again and just getting the site figured out and, you know, what we wanted to do with it exactly. But yeah. um, lately it's been growing like crazy. Um, so it's it's definitely um, coming back, especially since we launched the magazine, that's even attracted much more attention to it. Um, so that community has really been revived and that's very, very exciting to see. And I, I just love it cause it's just my, my passion to bring it back. Right. So it's been really fun. And Cody, what's your relationship with that now? Yeah. So, 
I joined NPN in 2018, roughly when David took it over. Um, obviously, was a little too young when it first came into life to be a part of it then. Make you feel a little bit older there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, yeah, of course. So, yeah, I, I joined once David took it over, and I didn't really do much with it because, I mean, even then, it was still trying to be revitalized and then what was it now almost i want to say two years ago it sound about right david it's uh i was actually doing a project in school about um different communities and everything and i chose to focus on npn kind of in truth because i kind of saw it as something that seemed to be like dead for the most part um and i after I did this project for class, I uh, reached back out to David and I'm like, hey, is there something I can do to help? Because the people that I interviewed and talked to that were a part of the community were, they loved it. I mean, they they had been a part of it since it came to fruition and uh, they seemed to get a lot out of it. So I wanted to do what I could to help. And I've been working with David to try and revitalize it, bring it back to life cool. and uh, help see it grow. As we have so cool so well something's obviously working uh which is great to hear and one of the things that's really in the front of my mind is how in i mean i've been involved in the kind of contemporary photography scene since 2002 you know so 22 years now really so before really before social media and there was npn and then there was naturescapes.net they were they were the kind of two primary forums along with places like Fred Miranda and you know the, the, those sorts of um, places and one of the things that I've really noticed is how supportive other photographers are of each other these days I, I think there's been almost a u-turn it used to be the norm to be quite defensive about our intellectual property or our locations or our methodology or our techniques um, and what I've really noticed, and I think places like NPN um, are are part of that, is is that our what's all locked up in our brains is of great value, almost to the point that it's more important than our images. Our, our images are just proof of process in a way, but the stuff that's locked up in our head in terms of our attitudes and and there seems to be this much more universal sense of camaraderie now than there ever has been do you i mean and obviously you guys are a focus for that you know you've got so many international and north american photographers contributing with content you know doing all the q and a's and you know giving their time you know to 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 help you create that sense of community um do does that constantly surprise you that there's that degree of cooperation or do you ever hit barriers where you get photographers that are just like no i'm not telling you anything <laughs> i mean there's there's certainly still people out there that are like that but the good thing about npn is it doesn't attract those people so we've you know created this community that has kind of this mindset of you know we want to help each other become all better you know we rise the tides for everyone um so I, I think we just attract the right people for that um so yeah i'm not i'm not exactly surprised because i saw that from the beginning with npn right so i knew if we could keep that whole mentality going that it would come right back and it has so it's yeah it's been great to see that this might be a good question for cody who who despite his uh his his deficiency of years uh seem, seems to have a reasonable perspective on these things uh, <laughs> i'm going to use the age card to my advantage it's wisdom it's wisdom um th so this uh the question that was kind of in my mind was the way to it seems to me that marketing these days you know a lot of people who follow uh, us are aspiring aspiring photographers with with uh, dreams of setting up their own photography businesses, uh, of making a living out of the photography, maybe running workshops or, or doing some sort of education. And do you feel that p 
part of NPN's growing success is knowing its target audience and not just trying to mop up as many people as possible, regardless of their compatibility with the platform. NPN, I think its biggest strength, like you go and like you said, is we are focused on people who want to learn from each other, who want to sort of get away from the hustle and bustle of social media that it's, and the quote unquote grind culture that we see on there. The um, one of the nicest things with it is that we don't have the anonymity that you can have on social media, which plays into that idea of you're not going to be trolling each other or you're trying to help each other as much as possible. And whether that means helping each other to figure out new ways of marketing their work or getting into workshops or anything else is a, a big benefit, I think. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily one of the biggest goals that we have for it. Do you think social media is necessary for, I mean, I'm talking about us in terms of professional photographers now. What, I mean, do you think we're, we've got to the point where social media is probably a negative influence in our lives? I definitely think so. I mean, I was off of social media for two years, just recently joined back up on it um, this past September or so, and I'm still contemplating whether it's of any benefit in my life um i mainly joined back up because i wanted to have some form of community but it's just you really can't get that like you can on npn or on other forum sites um it's very difficult to connect with people and to have actual conversations uh, on such a fast platform as social media i i think that it's it is beneficial if you already have an audience and have built up an audience over the years because at least then you're still getting some kind of reach. But for those just coming up, people like me where I don't have a major audience or anything, uh, it's it's a little bit more challenging and the worth isn't necessarily uh, as obvious. No, no, it, it's, uh, I mean, even, you know, I mean, I, I, I was kind of a late uh, getting on to, insta and you know so i don't have a huge following but you know the way it works these days is just even reaching your own audience is almost impossible but yeah i mean i i'm obviously fully i mean i've i've done uh, quite a bit of work with david over the years with various uh, things on npn and i i obviously i'm not as active as i could be because i've got my own forum <laughs> um but at the, you know at the end of the day it's i do see that sort of collaborative opportunity you know where you know, we, like you said, you know, we're all standing on each other's shoulders in a way, and it's a great way for us to help each other and to move forward. Now, the, the thing that is the most new aspect of NPN is your new quarterly magazine. Uh, what prompted you to start that? And um, does the world need another online landscape photography magazine? And I'm sure you're going to tell me why it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we we started out by just um, publishing articles on the blog. Um, what was that a couple years ago now or something? Um, well, I started it from the beginning, and then Cody came on and started helping with that to um, bring more new authors in. Um, and even when we were doing the blog, it was just something more focused on creativity, um, really trying to get the articles and the authors focused on, you know, growing your creative vision rather than articles focused on gear or, um, you know, trip reports, stuff like that. So um, we wanted to create something different. And one day, you know, I just messaged Cody. I'm like, let's start a magazine. What the hell? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was totally like on all board. Great business um, decisions. Although... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fly by the seat of my pants. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, Cody, Cody was totally on board. We were both, you know, totally freaked out about it. Um, um, but we decided to just go for it, um, see what happened. There wasn't, you know, a lot of risk involved because we just had to 
since it's a digital uh, magazine, it was just a lot of our time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we just went for it and we wanted to create something that had, you know, more long form articles that went really more in depth into subjects. And also a big aspect was, you know, getting different voices from people all around the world, um, different genres, um, not just sticking with the same five authors for every issue. Um, so we, we really wanted to di diversify that. So that's that's one of the most exciting aspects of it for me um, is just doing something different that hasn't been done before in this this realm, really. And, uh, and I presume... think going right along with that. No, carry on, carry on. Going on right, going right along with that, I think to answer more of your question, if it's necessary, uh, of course, I'm going to say yes, but I, if really I have to say yes because you have so many magazines out there that rely on a few voices that carry over each each time that they publish something. And with what David and I are trying to do is trying to give a platform for some of the smaller voices out there that otherwise don't have access to it. Right. So I'm trying to reach out to different people who may just be starting out or may only have two or three years under their belts with photography, but they still have insights that some other photographers, even professional photographers who have been in the game for decades can still get access to and can still glean information from. So, and I think that's the bigger differentiator between us and what could be seen as competition or the other magazines that are out there right now. Yeah, I mean, something that became the norm in magazines was, you know, every magazine was just a continuing stream of adverts for uh, cameras and various systems or filters or software uh, interspersed with the same articles pretty much over and over again on a seasonal cycle. Uh, oh, it's fall, we must mm -hmm. be doing fall color and oh, it's winter, we're doing minimalism. And, you know, it, it's just this kind of treadmill of predictability to a certain extent. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I, I, something I've always felt with David and obviously, you know, I, I don't have that same uh, length of relationship with you, Cody, but yet <laughs> we're working on it. Um, but <laughs> something I've always felt with David is that along with a lot of people who I who I'm really closely connected with, like Guy Tal or Teo Bosboom or Adam Gibbs or Sean Bagshaw, you know, everything you touch is quality. You know, you the, the the name and the quality are synonymous with each other, you know. So I've always felt that with NPN since David took over, that the quality that you the passion that you give it and the and the sort of attention to detail and the your own sort of professional and moral integrity kind of shine through the product. You know, so when I ask questions about does the world need this? It's obvious that, well, yeah, if you guys are doing it, then it's obviously going to be good, you know? So it's, it's why we're having this conversation, you know, it's not, I'm not, I'm not just going to talk to anybody. Um, so, you know, I, I think from my point of view, you know, everything I've done with NPN and historically, you know, it's, it's always felt like an honor to be part of that sort of pantheon of, of, inspiring people you know and like you said like Cody said there's no there's no guarantee that someone who's been teaching photography for 30 years actually knows what they're talking about or has any insights into creativity whatsoever you know time in the business does not equate to um, insight um, so I, 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 I applaud you for opening up the pages to to like you say newer photographers and I think this is something I was talking to Bill Neal about um, back in the fall there was it's really nice to see Bill still as really relevant. You know, he's he's one of the older photographers in, in our circles. We're ca I'm catching up rapidly. Um, but, you know, <laughs> for, for Bill to still have this, it's almost like he's in a renaissance in his own career. You know, he's becoming more relevant. Yeah as he gets older. And I think in, in landscape photography, 
you know, we've always been just standing on the shoulders of giants to a certain extent. But going back to what I was saying earlier on, that kind of sense of community and camaraderie and, and you know, talking to people like Eric Bennett, I mean, the guy's just so zen. You know, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty chilled, but Eric is so zen, you know? And it's just, yeah. there seems to be this, this, it's almost like the whole mindfulness movement has become synonymous with contemporary landscape photography. You know, that there's a core of people who really understand that our relationship with the landscape and our relationship with ourselves and the relationship with our mental health and our relationship with ego and the whole popularity index and all of those kind of attention seeking uh, triggers that we experience in contemporary social media are actually very negative for us. So I'm, I feel very honored to be part of that kind of zeitgeist of the sort of contemporary attitude to let's do this for the right reasons. So yeah, I'm, it's always great to talk to you guys. <laughs> that was my brave heart speech. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ballister. That's That means a lot coming from you, and I really appreciate that. I certainly don't feel like I'm, um, you know, that amazing. Um, I feel like I'm just trying to hold it all together, but... Um, <laughs> but but, but that's the thing. That. All of us feel like that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's uh, because we're not, we're not doing this for our egos, you know? It, it's, we're, not, we're not corporate right. sales guys. You know, so I think this is it, is yeah. that finally, you know, the, what's it, they say, the, the, the maniacs have taken over the asylum, you know, it's, it's like now we're in control and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your, um, obviously the, this is quite a new thing, the magazine, the inaugural issue was. That was in June. So you're, you're six months into this and where where are you going to take this what are you going to do with it how is it going to change lives <laughs> um well we have the the fourth issue is coming out in march um so we're we're very excited about that um we you know we're going to keep refining as we go um just kind of see where the ideas take us um i you know we might have some more um, edit, editorial like pieces, um, you know, we'll just kind of see where things go. Um, eventually I would like to actually make a print magazine. Um, but that's, that's in the future. Um, don't have any plans right now, but I would love to do that someday. I have to build up our subscriber base more first, but yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we really just want to keep inspiring and, um, keep coming up with new ideas. We want to, we don't want it to stay stagnant and just keep evolving it. Cody might have more to say about that. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, this... like David, like David said before, it's, uh, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. It's, <laughs> we have a slight direction. We know generally what kind of goals we want to stay in line with, but for the most part, we're just kind of letting things flow naturally, um, which I think is the best way to go about something like this. See what crops up, see what people like to see in the magazine, experiment here and there with some other things and, uh, and just go with it. Right. Um, here's an interesting question for you both. He, he, just to, just to cue it up for you. Um, after all the years that David's been involved in NPN and obviously Cody's um, researched this and, and sort of has more of a hands-on feel of these things now and reading lots and lots of these articles and talking to lots and lots of people, what are your insights into creativity? What are your insights into the attributes of a person that are likely to be productive in individuality and self-expression and self-actualization and, and true creativity, because that word gets bandied around a lot. I mean, I, I'm deeply involved in the whole concept of creativity and self-expression um, to the extent that I'm writing a whole new language to use rather than falling back on traditional photographic language because I didn't feel it was adequate. 
Um, so I'm re I'd really be interested to, to hear what, what your individual insights are into what is true photographic creativity and what are the attributes of someone that may be beneficial in, in developing one's own creativity. Um, I would say it's, for one, doing it for the right reasons, doing it for yourself um, because you love it, not to get popular um, and really not copying other people. Um, I think that's it's a good way to learn in the very beginning, but definitely not a way to grow yourself as an artist. Um, I know for me, um, starting to do contemplative photography was a big turning point um, for my creative vision and being able to just, um, you know, pay attention or not really paying attention, but being open to seeing things that interest you personally, um, rather than going after what everyone else is doing. Um, so that's, that's what kind of changed things for me is, um, you know, it's all about your life experiences and what you find personally interesting. Um, so I guess that's, that was kind of the turning point for me. Right. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way that David does, which is why I think that we work so well together. Um, it's just, when it comes to creativity, just being true to yourself is paramount. It should be more important than worrying about your ego, worrying about the sort of attention that you might get from things and i think that's part and parcel why at least i have had such a weird relationship with social media because everyone on there the you see the latest trends of showing my photographs until i get x amount of followers and that doesn't that's just that's not going to be true people who like what you're doing um and it's just creating for, in my opinion, the wrong reasons. Mm. If you're creating for uh, just the attention of things, then it's just, I, I don't know, why bother at that point? Uh, but for me, it's all about focusing on personal meaning that it's, and things that call out to me while I'm out in the nature and enjoying the surroundings around me the most. I think this is yeah, and for so me, true. Um, I, sorry, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Not um, for me, I kind of got off of social media for a large part. And um, part of that was just following my own vision. Um, so I wouldn't be influenced by others so much. And I'll say that my business has grown quite a lot since I decided to do that. Um, because I think people you know, see that you're doing things for the right reason and you're producing for yourself and they connect with that. And then they want to work with you more because you're, you're authentic. Um, so that, you know, I don't, I think you can step away from social media for a large part and um, still be successful as long as you're, um, you know, doing it for the right reasons for yourself. So not to mention all the time that you get back from exactly. scrolling and everything too, that you're exactly. no longer doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's certainly something that's been on my mind a lot. Um, I have a pretty unhealthy relationship with social media. I, I don't think it's positive uh, for me. And I feel that it does negatively influence the type of images that you would ch choose to share um, because you're on the impact game. You know, it's, it's stopping someone in their tracks uh, in a feed. Um, so on, on that point, do you feel then that sort of, you know, your newsletter, is that your primary, your own website newsletter, that's your primary um, communication with your client base? Yeah, for me, it definitely is. That's what I've put my almost 100% focus on. And it's, it's been well worthwhile doing that. Um, and I only share on social media occasionally, just for if I have a new release of something. Yeah just to get it out there a little bit more. But honestly, it's the it's the newsletter that brings in the very most attention. We're going to be talking once we finish this recording. <laughs> 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 we're, we're going to be doing that community thing where we share. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> um, 
Well, you know, I think from my part, you know, NPN was such a huge part of my early years as a photographer. I think I joined in 2004, uh, late 2003, early 2004. So that's about 20 years. And yeah. I know how important it was to me as a new photographer, as a new landscape photographer. And but at the same time, I still remember posting images and getting feedback from people who I thought were like gods. You know, they were like these people from on high who were just so much better than me. And I remember getting yeah. that feedback from them. And, you know, what I think has changed a lot since then is the ability to critique, truly critique an image without it just becoming an opinion. You know, a lot of people confuse image critique with opinion. I don't like it, therefore it's bad or I love that, therefore it's good. Those two things are not the same, you know, they're, they're not synonyms. And I think was really what I'm noticing over the, the, these years is that there's a really solid group of people now who truly understand what critique means. Um, and that evolution, I think, has very much been, um, well, part of NPN's contemporary evolution, you know, since you, you guys, or uh, David, you took over in 2018, you know, I think that's been encouraged in NPN. Um, and I think that's having a massive impact on what Cody's talking about in terms of being able to do something for the right reasons and it being recognized as maybe not easy to access or maybe not immediately aesthetically beautiful or pretty, but it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. And that, that understanding of the kind of expressive language, I think is evolving hugely. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the future. You know, I, I really am, you know, I, I, I've been saying for God, 15 years, I think that we're living in a golden age, you know, where it's it. And it's, I've literally been saying it every year for the last 15 years. And it's just, I think the more we push back against the social media influence on our art, you know, because that was, mm -hmm. we all got caught up in that kind of tidal wave for probably a decade where it's like, oh, if you're not on social media, then you're not, you know, you're nobody and all of that type of stuff. And I think more of us are just yeah. getting to that point where we just realize we're being manipulated and used and, you know, ultimately it's a negative influence for us. So, yeah, I mean, uh, anything I can do for NPN moving forward, you've got my number. Yeah, we appreciate that, Alistair. <laughs> and of course, yeah, but so anything anything else you guys want to, to get out there this afternoon? Um, I, I think I'll be posting links to NPN, of course, in the description and the magazine and the subscription. I know you have like bundle deals and stuff like that, where you've got, you know, the, 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 the forum and the magazine. Um, and that comes in a little bit cheaper, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. And we can uh, set your listeners up with the discount code too, so they can, if they're a, a new customer, they can sign up with that. Cool. We'll look forward to that. Well, you know, um, the, as with all of these conversations, we could talk for hours um, and, anybody who's got this far in the conversation uh, can pat themselves on the back. But um, yeah, I mean, for now, I think what we'll do is we'll wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for getting up early. Uh, it's it's a nice uh, civilized time for me on the west coast of Scotland, but uh, it's a wee bit earlier for you guys. But uh, yeah, an honor, an honor to meet you, Cody, as well. And uh, David, it's always great to chat. Yeah, always yeah, a pleasure. Thank Alistair. you.